between First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles. If you get to Job and Psalms, you've gone too far. All right, thank you, Wallace. But between Chronicles, Job, and Psalms, and there's a collection of a few little books put together, including one called Nehemiah. Nehemiah, chapter number eight. I believe with all my heart that the Lord God wants to share, wants me to share with you a couple of collection of messages regarding the Bible conference. Lord willing, this morning I'd like to share a message with you entitled Participating in the Bible Conference. Next week we'll preach on a subject praying for the Bible Conference. And then the following Sunday, the Sunday after the Bible conference is already done, although if the Lord wants it to last on, that'd be quite all right, amen? amen. amen. But that third Sunday, Lord willing, the message will be progressing after the Bible conference. You kind of get the idea that the Bible conference is a big deal? Yes, amen. Amen, it is. Excuse me just a moment. I was curious about the word conference. We're having a Bible conference. So I wanted to find out a definition for that word conference. And one of the definitions are found on Google. It reads like this. It defines conference as a formal meeting that typically takes place over a number of days and involves people with a shared interest. That would be us, amen? amen? Now, involving people with a shared interest, I want to encourage you, beloved sisters in Christ and brothers in Christ, here's, here's the interest that we share during this Bible conference. You know what that interest is? I'll give you a hint. The theme of the Bible conference is the interest which we share together. The theme of the Bible conference is the story of Jesus. Amen. That's all the interest we need to share right there, amen, is the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to encourage you, brothers and sisters in Christ, this Bible conference, I want to, I want to encourage you, treasure this moment. See it as a gift from God. And I also want to encourage you with this. Give God a chance to get a hold of your heart during this Bible conference. Amen. Give him that he, I really believe, he wants to do something special in your life through this Bible conference. Amen. Give him a chance to do just that. I encourage you to be in your place every night you can for the conference. We're in Numbers chapter 8. And in chapter 8, it, it basically gives us a description of an Old Testament Bible conference. And we'll look to see what chapter 8 has to say in just a moment. But please notice this with me. This book, the book of Nehemiah, it starts out, I, I love this, chapter 1 of Nehemiah starts out with prayer. Hold your place there in chapter 8, if you would please, and flip back to the very first chapter. Nehemiah chapter 1, and look with me in verse 11. There's multiple references in this short little chapter about Nehemiah praying, but chapter 1, verse 11, Nehemiah says these words to the Lord. It's actually a prayer he's making to the Lord. He says, O Lord, I beseech thee, let now thine ear be attentive to the prayer of thy servant. And to the prayer of thy servants who desire to fear thy name. And prosper, I pray thee, thy servant this day. Hey, we read the, about the Bible conference in chapter 8, but the whole thing starts out with prayer in chapter 1. Does that help you to kind of understand why we've been trying to emphasize prayer for the Bible conference so much in recent days and in recent weeks? 
That's why you've heard Brother Terry as he was leading us today in the morning prayer. And did you, did you hear him? He was encouraging you. I heard him encourage you as a group. And then I heard him go up to some of you as individuals and say, Hey, join us tonight for the prayer time, the special session of prayer at 6.30 tonight. And then that's again while we're having a special session of prayer, Lord willing, on Wednesday night during our midweek Bible study. We, we want to go to the Lord in prayer. We want to invite God to join us during this Bible conference. Amen? Amen. Hey, you know what? It's great to have these men of God coming uh, to us to preach the, the Word of God. But if God doesn't show up, it's a waste of time. That's right. We want the Lord to come. Beloved, please pray like this is the biggest thing to happen to Lulatin Baptist Church in a long time. Pray like this is the one of one of the biggest things that has happened to you since you got saved. Pray and invite God to get a hold of our hearts. Dads and moms and grandparents, this is what I want to encourage you to do now. When you go home today and you sit down with your family at the lunch table, I'm sure you're going to take a moment to pray and give thanks to your, for your food. During that prayer time, let your children and your grandchildren, let your spouse hear you as you go to God and say, God, during the Bible conference, Please get a hold of our hearts. Amen. And then also invite God to give you a fresh glimpse of Jesus Christ during the Bible conference. The book of Nehemiah starts out with prayer. This conference needs to start out with prayer. Amen. Secondly, I'd like you to notice this before we get into the heart of the message. The book of, De of Nehemiah, watch this now, y'all. Y'all, listen, get, get tuned in. Are you with me? Amen. Amen. The book of Nehemiah describes opposition to God's work. Between chapter 1, where the whole story starts out with prayer, and chapter 8, where the Bible conference is held, there is example after example after example of opposition. In the story of Nehemiah, and we don't have the time to read it today, the story of Nehemiah mm -hmm. I identifies uh, three individuals from outside the congregation. They are Sanballat, Tobiah, and Geshem. Those are folks who lead a group from outside the congregation of the people of God who try to oppose what's going on among God's people. And then, the more you get into the story, there's actually a group from within the congregation that starts to cause a stir. I want you to keep this in mind. This book describes opposition to God's work in Nehemiah, and this conference, this church, should expect opposition. That's right. I'm not trying to be gloomy or pessimistic. I'm just trying to be real with you. What we're seeking to do, beloved, is we're, we're seeking to, we're praying that this Bible conference, can I say it this way? We're praying this Bible conference would take us to a higher level with God. Amen. Wouldn't that be awesome? Yes. I mean, for us, for us as individual believers to go to a higher level with God. Amen. We pray that our, this, God will use this conference, this, this conference to take our families to a higher level with God. Amen. And yes, we are praying that God will use this conference to take our church to a higher level with Amen. God. Amen. But remember this. Write this down. The higher the level, the more the devil. Amen. You remember that. Higher level, more devil. Y'all say that with me. Ready? Higher level, more devil. Second time. Let's say it twice as loud. Ready? Higher level, more devil. Friends, that's just the truth throughout the Bible. When God's people go to the Lord humbly and invite Him to work in their hearts and in their homes and in their church, that gets God's attention. But it will also get the enemy's attention. By the way, that's another reason why we need to be praying. Let's pray that the Lord would keep the devil 
out Amen. of our heads and out of our church and, and, and out of this conference. Amen. I like the story of the Lord Jesus, you know, back in the Gospels. He talked about the sower that went forth to sow the seed. Do you remember that? And the Lord Jesus, he said, as the sower was going out to the field, some of the seed fell by the wayside. And he said, the birds came and ate that seed. Do you remember that? Later on, he explains the meaning of that parable. Do you remember in the Gospels how he, what he said about the birds, what they represent? The devil. He says, that's just how the devil will act. The seed will be sown, but he'll come in and try to swoop it away. Let's pray, beloved, that the Lord will keep the birds away. Amen. Amen. The seed is about to be sown. And honey, if you're not excited, you should be. That's right. But we need to pray that the Lord will keep the birds away. I just want to give you this heads up. This is just kind of like a little bit of church business between you and me right now. Our, our leadership team already knows about this. But um, not that we've, we haven't gotten any kind of threats. We're not expecting any problems. But just so you know how your pastor and your leadership team works, I want you to know how we think. We're not perfect. Please pray for your pastor and your leadership team, by the way. But we, we like to think proactive instead of reactive. And knowing that we're inviting God to come in, we're inviting God to do a work in our hearts, we're inviting the seed to be sown in our homes and our hearts, knowing that that will attract the birds, knowing that higher level means more devil, knowing that in the book of Nehemiah, some evil men from the outside came in to try to stir things up, what we've done is, is we contacted our sheriff. By the way, thank God for Sheriff Davis. Amen. We called him several days ago, and we said, Sir, we've got this Bible conference coming up in a couple of weeks. Yeah, I've seen your advertisements about it. I said, we're not expecting any problems, but wouldn't it be possible if it's not, I know this is difficult times, but if it's not too much of a burden on the Sheriff's Department, would it be possible if maybe if we could have a deputy on the campus while we're having our... Bible conference. I appreciate what he said. He said two things, two or three things. He said, preacher, he said, that wouldn't be a problem at all. He said, I'll make sure that happens. Isn't that good? Now, sometimes you may see the deputy, sometimes you may not. But I appreciate him saying that. And then he said a second thing that I really appreciate. He said, yes, he said, preacher, he said, I'll make sure we get a deputy there I'll make sure that happens. He said, and by the way, this is so good. He said, I saw your advertisements. He said, I'm planning on being there one or two nights myself. Amen. Isn't that good? Amen. So uh, be sure, Lord willing, when, whenever you do see the deputies here, and if it's a convenient time, an appropriate time, be sure and thank them and recognize them and, and do the same for the sheriff as, as well, if you would, please. But uh, that's just the kind of world we live in and uh, we want to do the best we can to protect you and to keep the devil out. Amen. Now let's get into the heart of the message. I promise I won't keep you here for, uh, for more than two hours. Amen. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. All right, but if you'll notice with me now in our text in Nehemiah chapter 8, I'd just like to read to you verses 1 oh, down through uh, verse 6. And uh, actually, let's just for the sake of time, let's read verses 1 through 3. Nehemiah 8, the Bible says, And all the people gathered themselves together as one man into the street that was before the water gate. And they spake unto Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded to Israel. Just to share this thought with you real quick, the book of the law of Moses, that you know, they didn't have a complete Old Testament when this was written. They certainly didn't have an entire Bible like you and I do now. But they had the Law of Moses. That refers to the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. So the people gather together, and they get a hold of Ezra the scribe, 
and they call him, they say, hey, would you please bring us, basically what they're saying, would you please bring the Bible to us? Keep in mind, they didn't have individual copies back then like we do today. Isn't God good to us to let us have individual copies? Amen. Verse number two, it says in Ezra the priest. Allow me, if you would, to stop right there for just a second. You see in chapter, I'm sorry, in verse one, it calls him Ezra the scribe. And then in verse two, it calls him Ezra the priest. Mark it down. God in his good book is sending us a message right there. When it says Ezra the scribe, back in the Bible days, a scribe was a man who copied, who handmade, hand wrote copies of the Bible. Back then, they didn't have inkjet printers, right? No. They didn't have the copy machine just yet. So if they wanted a copy of the Bible, somebody had to do it by hand. And there was a certain group of men identified as the scribes. That was their job to do it. Now, some of them, they knew the Bible very well, but they didn't incorporate it into their lives. But then there were some scribes like Ezra who cared about the Word of God. This is a man who loved the Lord. Amen. So when it says he's a scribe, let that, let that be a signal to you that he knew the word of God and he cared for it. Then in verse 2, it calls him, he's not just a scribe, but he's also the priest. Amen. Now, back in the Bible days, there were some priests who were corrupt. They had, they had the right position, but they didn't have a right heart. It's just like some Preachers today, too, right? Just because you have the title pastor doesn't mean you're a man of God or that you're walking with the Lord. But Ezra, when you read about his life in the Old Testament, he was a man of God. He cared about the scriptures. He was a scribe. Then also he was devoted to God. He's a priest. It says, And Ezra the priest brought the law before the congregation, both of men. We got some men in here this morning. Amen. Oh, guys, that's kind of weak. We got some men in here this morning. Amen. 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 And uh, both before men and women. We got some ladies in here this morning. Amen. There you go. And all that could hear with understanding upon the first day of the seventh month. Hmm. The first day of the seventh month. This might seem odd to you, but... The folks back in the Bible days would, would know what that means, the first day of the seventh month. You know what the first day of the seventh month was for the Israelites? It was called the Feast of Trumpets. You know what the first day of the seventh month was for them? It was the beginning of the, of the civil new year. It was a holiday. And instead of going to the beach or out to the campsite, they got a hold of the preacher and they said, hey, we're all going to get together. How about you bring us the Bible? Isn't that good? Yeah. Look at verse 3. It says, and he read therein before the street that was before the water gate from the morning until midday, before the men and the women and those that could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive unto the book of the law. I want to share with you four quick points about this passage. First of all, if you'll notice with me, a righteous man, Ezra. Again there in verse 1, it calls him Ezra the scribe. Verse 2, he's called Ezra the priest. Let's read a little bit more about Ezra just to see what kind of man he was. If you'll hold your place in Nehemiah, the book right before Nehemiah, just in front of Nehemiah, is the book of Ezra. And if you would, look there with me in Ezra chapter number 7. Let's see what kind of man of God the people, I mean the people, the congregation, they knew the right man to get a hold of. They said, oh, we want to speak not just to any scribe, we want to meet not just with any priest, but we want to get a hold of Ezra. Now what was it about him that the people were saying, if there's going to be somebody reading God's word to us, we want it to be him. Well, look here in Ezra chapter 7. Look at verse 6, please. It says, This Ezra went up from Babylon, and he was a ready scribe in the law of Moses, which the Lord God of Israel had given. And the king granted him, granted Ezra, all his requests 
according to the hand of the Lord his God upon him. Jump down, if you would please, verse 10. For Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord and to do it. Amen. And to teach in Israel statutes and judgments. See, folks, that congregation back there in the city of Jerusalem said, that's the kind of man we want. A man that's got a heart for the scriptures. A man that has a heart for God. You, sir, we want you to read the scriptures to us. Remember this, beloved. We don't have the time. I wish we did. To go through example after example after example in the Bible of how God uses men to deliver his message to his people. And I hope you remember that. God uses men to deliver his message to his people. Just a couple of examples in the New Testament. You don't have to turn there, but in John chapter 1, verse 6, the Bible says, There was a man sent from God whose name was John. God sends men to his people. You don't have to turn there, but just let me, I'm trying to, I just started about a week ago to try and memorize this passage. I'll just read a little bit of it to you from Ezekiel chapter 2. It says, and the Lord said unto Ezekiel, son of man, I send you to the children of Israel. You see, beloved, God sends men to speak his message to his people. And I'm telling you right now, we want to focus on Jesus during the Bible conference, but I believe in order for it this to happen, I believe God is sending some men to bring his message to this congregation. I want to encourage you to pray for Brother Robbie Foster, Brother Brad Waters, Brother Mike Everson, Brother Don Haddock. Pray that God will give them wisdom this week as they prepare. Pray that they will walk close to God. Pray, listen to this, y'all. Pray that God will fill their mouths with the words of Christ. Amen. Isn't that what you want to hear? Isn't that who you want to hear from? Amen. Christ. Now let me share this with you and we'll move on quickly. I want to remind you. Let me back up just a moment. When, when the Lord laid those men on my heart for me to contact them, and believe me, we contacted them almost a year ago. That's how busy they are. Okay? Um, we contacted them and, and we asked them, hey, would you come to Lulaton Baptist Church? And uh, without hesitation, without hesitation, they said yes. You know what I appreciate about each of them? None of them, not a single one of them, and not even our worship leader, the man who's going to be doing the special music. By the way, we need to pray for Brother Sam Stack as well. But none of them asked well, how much money are you going to give me? Hmm. Not a single one. Amen. Doesn't that tell you a lot? Yes. That tells you their heart's motivation. They're not in it for the money, honey. That's right. They want to honor the Lord and they want to be a blessing to you. But on the other hand, I do want to remind you, church, the Bible teaches us both in the Old and the New Testament, the Lord has ordained it. You don't have to turn there, but in 1 Corinthians 9 and verse 14, the Bible says that the Lord has ordained that they who preach the gospel should live of the gospel. Right. They give us spiritual things, we give them carnal things. You know, what, you know what the Bible means there by carnal thing? We give them our money. That way they can invest time spending time with God and working on sermons and getting a message from the Lord so that we can hear from the Lord. They don't have to go out and work a regular job. They can spend time with Him and come and share with you what He put on their heart. It's just the Bible way. Here's what I want to encourage you to do. I want to encourage you during the week of the Bible conference, we're not going to be passing an offering plate. It's going to be that little white church back there. I want to encourage everybody to give something. Yes, sir. Oh, you're just in it for the money. No, if you want to see me after church, I'll show you from the Bible. But you can start in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. I pray that will be a blessing to you. We see a righteous man. Secondly, and I've got to move on. We see in verse 2, look at verse 2. It says, And Ezra the priest brought the law. This is back in Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 2. 
Ezra the priest brought the law before the congregation, both of men and women, all that could hear and all that could hear with understanding. I like to back up in verse 1. Look at verse 1 with me if you would. It says, and all the people gathered themselves together. You know what we see in these verses? First of all, we see a righteous man. Also, we see a rally of God's people. A coming together of God's people. You know, you know what verse 1 and 2 tells us, y'all? Again, just look at those first four words in verse 1. And all the people. You know what that's telling us? Everybody showed up. I want to encourage you, beloved. Give God a chance. I know for some of you, we're talking about this would be the first time ever that you would come to Lulatin Baptist Church for a night service. I understand. Give God a chance. Hey, I want to encourage you to arrive early. Y'all, I have no idea how many people we should expect, but we need to expect the possibility of a good crowd. I want to encourage you to a lot, arrive early so you can get a good seat. By the way, we're going to have limited seating. We're going to have every other pew blocked off like we do now. It might mean, and it hurts me to say this, but it might mean if folks come in, you know, too late, we might have to turn them away because we've got to put your safety and your health as a priority. That's why I want to encourage you, church, to arrive early. I want to encourage you to get here by 610, 615 at the latest. If you need transportation, please call us. I want to encourage you when you get here, greet visitors. You know, we need to keep six feet apart. We can't be shaking hands or hugging anybody, but say hello. Greet visitors. Um, if your health will allow, I want to encourage you to sit up front. If your health will allow. Parents and grandparents, I want to encourage you to require your kids to attend. Amen. Just make it a... Re hey, hey, you require them to go to school, right? right? And you require them to go to the doctor when there's a health issue. I want to encourage you to require them to come to church. Amen. I want to encourage you to bring your Bible and a notepad as well. And we must hurry along. Men, please. Men especially. You men who are in the audience today, look there in chapter 8. Look at verse 4 and verse 7. Y'all don't laugh at me when I try to pronounce these names. I'm going to try my best. Some of them I'm just going to fake it, okay? But there's a reason why I want to ask you men to look with me in verse 4 and verse 7. Here's this Bible conference going on. The preacher is reading from the scripture. Everybody showed up. And look at verse 4. And Ezra the scribe stood upon a pulpit of wood, which they had made for the purpose. And beside him stood, now hang on, y'all, here we go. Beside Ezra, the priest, the preacher, stood Mattathiah and Shema and Ananiah and Urijah and Hilkiah and Maasiah on his right hand. And on his left hand, Pediah and Mishael and Melchiah and Hashum and Hashpadana. By the way, you might, instead of naming your son Caden, maybe you might want to think about Hashpadana. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and Zechariah and Meshulam. Guys, you know why I want to mention those names to you? Because when you look those words up in the Hebrew, all of those are male names. Those are all men standing beside the preacher while he's reading the word of God to all the people. Look at verse 7. Also, Jeshua and Bani and Sherebiah and Jamin and Akub and Shebathai and Hodijah, and Maasiah, and Kalita, and Azariah, and Jozebad, and Hanan, and Peliah, and the Levite. Those are all men. They're all masculine names. They caused the people to understand the law, and the people stood in their place. Here's what I'm trying to say, guys. The men showed up. Amen. The men got involved. Hey, there's a, there, thank God for the ladies. I love ladies. I'm married to one. Amen? Amen. Amen. And we would be in a heap of trouble if we didn't have our ladies. But men, there's something about you showing up for this Bible conference. Amen. 
Just your presence is powerful. These men, they didn't just show up. But you know, did you see there at the end of verse 7? It says those men, they caused the people to understand the law. They got involved. Amen. We see a righteous man, a rally of God's people. Quickly now, we see a reading of God's word. We just read about it a couple of times now. Again, in verse 3, it says he read before, uh, he read from the Bible in the street where the people were standing. You all you know what's really amazing? When I read this story, and you can read it from cover to cover, from chapter to chapter in Nehemiah, I don't see where they were playing any music. There was no concert. There was no healing service. There was just the reading of God's word. And it says there in verse 2, you know, that they met together on the first day of the seventh month. But y'all, you got to read the rest of the chapter to find out how long this went on. Jump over to uh, verse 13, if you would. Stay with me, please. Verse 13, it says, And on the second day were gathered together the chief and the fathers of all the people, the priests and the Levites, unto Ezra the scribe, even to understand the words of the law. Okay, so they're looking in the word there again in verse 30, 13. But jump down to verse 18, quickly, please. Verse 18, also day by day from the first day unto the last day he read in the book of the law of God. Y'all, it's one thing to have a Sunday only service and thank God for that and God bless you for being here. But we've got a Bible conference that's going to be day after day after day for four days in a row. Why are we doing something like that? Well, in the Bible they had it for seven or eight days in a row. People showed up. Amen. Y'all, uh, we're talking about you know participating uh, in, in the uh, in the Bible conference. Look at the end of verse three, if you would please. At the end of verse three, it says, "And the ears of all the people were attentive unto the book of the law." You know what that means? As that preacher was reading the Bible, the people were all ears. Amen. You see, it's amazing when you're standing out in front of folks. You can tell sometimes folks just tune you out. Or, you know, they're not listening, or they'd rather not hear. But this is the Word of God we're talking about. I want to encourage you to be all ears. Amen. Ask God to help you. Help our audience to be all ears during the Bible.